Hello, this is Mr. Etherall. Um, just going to talk a little bit about Jekyll and Hyde, do a few videos where I go through the story, pick out some key quotes, talk about some ideas that are worth discussing in terms of the upcoming English literature exam. Um, so, first of all, just a website that I think is really, really useful to use is one called memrise.com, which is M E M R I S E.com. And if you go onto that website, Lots of the quotes that I'm talking about are there um, just in a long list and you can just click on chapter by chapter and find quotes from Jekyll and Hyde to use for learning quotes off by heart. I'll, I'll talk about some but that's it's just a good place to go so you can see them in print. So I recommend going there. So let's just jump straight in with Jekyll and Hyde. So first of all, we're on chapter one um, is the chapter where we, we, we meet Utterson and Enfield. Utterson and, Utterson and Enfield are going for a walk. And Enfield shares the story with Utterson of um, him witnessing Hyde trampling uh, a young girl. And he, says, you know, he describes it as an incredible thing to see and it, and it shocks, shocks Utterson. And some of the details in it get Utterson worrying and thinking because it includes a name that he recognises from a will which comes up in chapter two. But the main, the main detail of chapter one is, is these two guys and their conversation about, about, this, about this incident. So let's just go through a few little bits and pieces of that chapter to see quotes that we might talk about and ideas that are presented. So first of all, there's some description of, of the setting. So Two really good quotes in terms of in terms of the description of the setting. One is that there's a sinister block of building thrust itself forward. Um, so really nice bit of personification there of the building. The, the evil is linked to that building. And the building that is being described here is um, Henry Jekyll's home. But the back entrance of it that Hyde uses. So the home is a symbol of the two different sides of Jekyll and Hyde and the bit we're seeing is the Hyde bit, the ugly side of it. So the house is personified. Also th the door is described as blistered and disdained. So two just really nice interesting descriptions of it which are symbolic of Hyde's, Hyde's character. Then we get um, the description of, of, of the violence. So the quote that we talked about often in class is that trampled calmly quote that oxymoron a really nice one just to remember to talk about the ease of violence that he's just happy happy to be aggressive both of those words we can zoom in and talk about connotations of and say trample connotes this and calmly connotes that and, and discuss the effect of those two quotes there's also some other other descriptions in this scene which are, are, are good to good to remember hellish to see opportunity to talk about context there this is Enfield describing the violence hellish to see so we can talk about ideas of hell and the ideas that what Jekyll is doing in terms of experimenting and becoming Hyde is going against religion and there's an opportunity to discuss context there and the value that the Victorian society placed on religion and how they would see meddling with religion um, in, in, term, in terms of their faith so that be that that's an important thing to talk about there's also a description of um, Jekyll where Enfield tries to get to grips with what he looks like. He says he must be deformed somewhere. He gives a strong feeling of deformity, although I couldn't specify the point. So he, it feels like he's deformed, though it's difficult to say what actually is deformed about him. So there's this idea of him looking outwardly deformed. But actually there's this kind of supernatural sense, this atmosphere about him that suggests deformity which is deformity of his soul, which is being described rather than physical deformity, although he, he does seem to be physically deformed in some of the descriptions as well. But it's, it's, it's again symbolic of what's going on inside. So we're getting to know Hyde right early on in this, in the, in this chapter. Um, there's a, another simile that describes him as like some damned juggernaut. Um, again, really, really good simile to get into in terms of the power, the aggression, the forcefulness of Hyde and his his um, character. Um, Enfield says something else which is interesting. He said he's going to make his name stink from one end of London to the other. Now they don't end up. He doesn't end up doing that because Hyde then reappears with money and blackmails. But that idea of making his name stink from one end of London to another, there is an idea of Victorian reputation, 
And if I can tell everyone that you're a terrible person, then your reputation is destroyed. Um, and so that idea of reputation being really important is introduced at that point. And it's, it's kind of reputation over reality. The reality is that hides evil. But if we can hide that under, under a smokescreen and hide that behind a blackmail, then that reality won't be known by people and his reputation can, can remain. Not that Hyde has a great reputation, but that introduction of reputation being massively important to the Victorian society is introduced in this chapter. Also, blackmails. The idea of blackmail is really linked to reputation because there's a preservation of reputation when you blackmail someone to, to, sub, sub, um, to hide a truth, then you are protecting reputation through money. And because reputation is so important, money will be paid to protect that reputation, which is, which is what happens in this chapter. Now, Utterson, when he hears Enfield's story, um, both of them are kind of these Victorian gentlemen. They're both kind of uneasy with saying exactly what happens and naming names because they feel that's gossiping and they don't want to ruin other people's reputations. But Utterson pushes him on this because he recognises the name Hyde because he is the, is, the, is the lawyer who has got Henry Jekyll's will. And Henry Jekyll's will says that if I disappear, all my money should go to Hyde. And so this is ringing alarm bells for Utterson. And so he makes a mission to explore this link and to look into it. And that's where chapter two progresses. Utterson starts looking for Hyde, starts trying to find out some of the truth of, of this. So it's kind of this novel set up like a detective novel at this moment. We've seen some violence. We've seen these two people that are linked together in seemingly um, unclear ways. We've got someone respectable and someone doing great violence. And why on earth would this respectable man give himself, uh, give his money to this violent man? And Lanyon, um, sorry, not Lanyon, Utterson is someone who is trying to figure things out logically. So He's using logic to try and figure this out. The problem is logic won't answer because there's a supernatural uh, quality to this. There's a supernatural answer that he'll never get by just using conventional logic. So that reality, uh, that logical searching is challenged by this idea of a supernatural reality as well. Both those two things don't kind of go together when you investigate a case. So chapter two, um, I should go see Lanyon, who is a scientist. Um, and he is someone who no longer has a relationship with Jekyll because he believes that what Jekyll was getting himself into was unscientific balderdash is the words that he used. Balderdash is a word for nonsense. So he felt he was going beyond science and disagreed with him, which, which shows us the controversy of where Jekyll was taking his science. Um, Utterson then, he, he, he has a nightmare about, about Jekyll, sorry, not about Jekyll, about, about Hyde, and then he's, he's troubled and he, and he goes searching for Hyde and he eventually finds Hyde. And the descriptions of Hyde are really, really excellent quotes. So some really good quotes to use. So troglodytic, this referred to him being a caveman, to being something prehistoric, kind of evolutionary, going backwards in time. Um, he's used with lots of animalistic verbs, hissing intake of breath. Hissing also could relate to the devil, as the devil um, is portrayed as a snake in the Garden of Eden right at the beginning of the Bible. So hissing links to that, gives us this idea of evil. This is, this is when Utterson first meets Hyde and snarled aloud into a savage laugh. All of this has got evolutionary ideas into it about going backwards in evolutionary terms, about Hyde being animalistic, telling us about his, his violence, um, so all, 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 all of those quotes, really, really excellent quotes. That's, that's chapter one and chapter two. I'll post another chapter where I talk about the chapters, chapters going through. But I hope that's been helpful just to summarise, understand and, and get a few quotes to start thinking about using and talking about.